Welcome to this video on structural geology and mountain building. The learning targets for this video are to explain the difference between elastic and plastic rock deformation, to list the major types of faults and folds and describe how they form, to use block diagrams and maps to identify faults and folds, to evaluate the various processes that contribute to mountain building and to describe the four main mountain types and give examples of each one. Start out with some basics on deformation. So just as if you were going to take a stick, hold it between your hands, bend it until it broke, the same thing happens with the earth. That's a buildup of strain within that rock or in that stick until it ruptures, fractures, and breaks. And that's what happens when an earthquake happens or when a fault occurs. We can look at some work that's been done in labs to look at the effects of directional stress. So the top left corner picture shows what happens when compressional stress is applied to rock units. It causes them to become shortened horizontally and to thicken vertically. So here we see the layers are bulging up, that vertical thickening, as they are shortening. Tensional stress or extensional stress causes rock units to lengthen horizontally and to thin vertically, and sometimes they even rupture, as seen with this fault that's occurred in these layers. Shear stress is horizontal displacement, and that happens along a fault zone. Starting with the types of folds, we'll begin with a fold called a syncline. A syncline is the down warping of strata. And in a syncline, you can see the top cartoon diagram with the oldest layers on the bottom, that would be the green rock, and the youngest on the top in the center. So when that syncline forms and is eroded across the surface, walking from the axis, that's the center of the fold, walking from the axis out towards the limbs, to the right or to the left, one would walk from younger rock into progressively older rock. So young rock at the axial region, old rocks out on the limbs. And you can see examples of synclines in the two pictures here. The next type of fold is an anticline. An anticline is an up warping of strata. So if you think about some strata being compressed, they might bulge upward. And the age pattern is opposite of that of a syncline. So here's the axial region in the center of this fold, the center of this anticline where the older rock is exposed by erosion and walking toward the limbs in either the right direction or the left direction, one would walk into progressively younger strata. Sometimes folds are actually folded over on top of themselves and we call that a recumbent fold. So we see examples of two recumbent folds in these pictures. Moving on to faults. Some terminology associated with faults. A fault is a fracture in a rock along which there's been some kind of displacement. We have hanging walls, foot walls, and fault scarps. The fault scarp is that exposed area that is the fault surface itself. The hanging wall is a block that drops down in relationship to the foot wall. The foot wall, if you think about a shoe having a pointed toe, also has a pointed toe. It's a good way to remember which one is the foot wall. Types of faults include a normal fault in which the hanging wall has moved down relative to the foot wall. And you can see examples of normal faults here in the offset of these dark layers in the bottom left-hand corner. And in the picture in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see on the left side, the foot wall, the fault plane, separating the two sides, the foot wall and the hanging wall, and the hanging wall again has moved down in a normal fault. Moving on to a reverse fault. In a reverse fault, in the cartoon in the top left corner, we see that the hanging wall moves upward relative to the foot wall block. So this is a reverse fault, which often forms in a compressional environment. And you can see examples in the bottom left corner here. This is a good index bed to look at has moved up, so here is the hanging wall, moving up relative to the foot wall on the bottom right. And the picture here in the bottom right, again, you see the offset of beds with the hanging wall moving up 
and over that foot wall. A strike slip fault is a fault where the motion is horizontal. And you can see particularly in the bottom right picture where there is offset, horizontal offset along a road. And this top portion appears to have moved to the right and the bottom portion appears to move, have moved to the left. And the fault itself runs through the middle there. You can also see the fault running through the middle of this uh, tree orchard. And in this case, the bottom right corner seems to have moved off to the right, while the top left part seems to have moved off to the left. So we would call this particular example a left lateral strike slip fault, meaning if you look across to the other side of the fault, it looks like that side has moved to the left. And we would call the bottom right picture a right lateral strike slip fault, meaning if you look across to the other side of the fault, it appears that side has moved off to the right. We also have domes and basins. So contrasting domes and basins, a dome is a circular or elongated structure that's caused by the upwarping of sedimentary rock. And it's often caused when some igneous or metamorphic rock has pushed up from underneath. In a dome, the youngest rock can be found out on the flanks and the oldest rocks would be found in the center. In a basin, we see the opposite pattern with the ages of those sedimentary rocks. So a down warping of the surface and the youngest rocks found in the center of the basin with the older rocks out on the flanks. Moving on to talk about mountain building or orogenesis. Oros meaning mountain and genesis meaning coming into being. So orogenesis is the process by which mountains or mountain belts are created. And we have four main types of mountains. First being fault block mountains. Fault block mountains are common in regions where there are extensional forces at work. And these are mountains that are associated with high angles of normal faulting. Examples of fault block mountains include the Sierra Nevada, the Grand Tetons, and the Basin and Range Province shown here. The second type of mountains that we'll talk about are folded mountains. Folded mountains are the result of large scale compressional forces. So in a situation where there is a convergent plate boundary, we might find folded mountains would result. In this case, the rock units are shortened and thickened vertically as a series of repeating anticlines and synclines forms to form that mountain belt. So you can see things like this in the Appalachians uh, or in the Valley and Ridge province. And you see here in the bottom picture, these crenulation of sequential anticline synclines in this folded mountain belt. Of course, we have volcanic mountains that result from volcanic activity where layers of lava or pyroclastic materials or ash form the volcanic structures that we see in Mount St. Helens or Mount Mayon or Mount Etna and many of the other volcanoes around the world. Now we have island arc volcanoes. These form at the convergence of two oceanic plates. When one of those plates is subducted beneath the other, the overriding plate has volcanic activity that occurs on it, oftentimes forming this island arc. Examples of this are Tonga and Marianas and the Aleutian Islands. I think we're ready to review our learning targets and head off to the Mastery Chuck quiz. So we talked about the difference between elastic and plastic deformation, so faults and folds. We talked about the different types of folds and faults. We used diagrams to identify folds and faults. We evaluated the processes that contributed to mountain building, and we talked about the four main types of mountains and examples of each one. Go ahead and take your mastery quiz, and I'll see you in class.